Hi, this is Kendra Fleshman. Welcome to the studio. I'm so glad you're joining me in the studio today. I've got some really fun things planned for us to try using stop motion with cut paper. We're going to create two characters in this first tutorial, and then we're going to use those characters in tutorial number two. We're gonna use Stop Motion Studio Pro, and we're gonna animate. We're gonna focus on expressions with a little bit of lip syncing, and then we're gonna use Dragon Frame in tutorial number three, and we're going to really focus on lip syncing because Dragon Frame has some parts to that program that really allow you to do some nice lip syncing. So the first thing we need to do is make our characters. Let's grab a pencil, some paper, some scissors, maybe some color pencils, and let's make some characters. Let's create a cute little alien. When I'm designing the body and the neck, I want to make sure that the head and the neck are separate and that way I can animate the head back and forth and that's going to bring in even more expression for our little alien. I've decided to go ahead and draw his eyes on the base layer as being closed. You can either draw them on on this base layer or leave them off and then use cut paper to create the eyes closed. I decided to just go ahead and draw it on there. I've chosen yellow as a base color and then I'm coming back in with a light green to start to build my shadows to make this look a little bit more 3D. I'm coming in around his chin and in around his cheeks but leaving that yellow as that base layer so that what I'm doing is just making it look a little bit more 3D. And then I'm going to come back with a light pink and a little bit darker purple just to warm it up and to really start to give his face some life. I'm working with a lot of layers. I'm also using a technique where you kind of, it's called cross hatching. You go back and forth at a different angle with your drawing tool and it gives it kind of a nice texture. And we're going to finish off the body using the same technique, cross hatching back and forth, building up some color layers, and then using the darker colors around the outside just to give it a little bit of shape so it starts to look kind of 3D even though we're using the flat cut paper. Now we're going to cut our character out and we'll start creating some eyes and some mouths so we can really give this guy some expression. Now I'm making his eyes really big because he's a, you know, an animated character and he needs to have a lot of expression really exaggerated. So let's make the eyes really big. I'm using a shape and then tracing the shape so that they're the same. And then I can use both sides of these eyes drawing the pupils and the irises in different directions so that I can have him look one way and then look the other way and I can have his eyes be cross-eyed, which is kind of cute. I can even turn them upside down and get a whole different feeling with the upside down eyes. So now I'm getting the size about the same as the other eyes and these eyes are going to be looking forward. And here I'm trying to decide if I like the curve or if I like the flatter eye. 
and I decided the flatter eye works a little better. And when I mean flatter, I mean the bottom of the eye is not quite as curved. So you'll notice it takes a lot of cutting, recutting, measuring. And then thinking about what types of expressions you want to give your little characters. Now at first I drew the pupils right in the center, but he had a really surprised look. So I changed it and moved the pupils up a little bit so that they're underneath his eyelid. And you can see I've added a couple of the reflections. I'm filling in the pupil with a deep indigo color pencil, not a black, I'm using deep indigo. I really like the look of the deep indigo. I think it's, it's a richer dark color than just using plain black. And if it's not dark enough, I'll come back with a real dark purple on the top or a real, real dark blue and just kind of mix back and forth and it gives you a really rich black. So now I've chosen some colors for my little alien's eyes, and I'm going to layer them on, working from the lighter colors to the darker colors, kind of defining what the iris is gonna look like. Now I'm noticing when I set his eyes down, it needs a little bit of black or the deep indigo along the edges so that you can really see his eyes and have them really stand out. Here are the eyes that I've created for our alien. I have the open eyes looking straight forward. I have eyes looking side to side. And then I created some sleepy eyes or they could even be sad eyes or angry eyes depending on what I do with the mouth and with the eyebrows. And you'll notice every time I change them, it changes his expression. You're going to need to think a little bit about what sounds you want to make. And I would recommend you practice in the mirror, saying your dialogue, taking a look at the shape of your mouth and see if you can draw that or something similar. You don't need every single sound, but there are certain sounds that are going to uh, really have a certain shape to them. And if you're having a hard time with this, if you look online, there's actually pictures. If you look up animating mouths and sounds, they'll show you some different ideas. So here I have kind of an O, an E, eh, an I, eh, and an AH. So that mouth shape right here can be used for lots of different sounds. And this one's more of a grumpy. He looks like he's saying meh, <laughs> especially with those eyes. And that one, he almost looks like he's yawning with his sleepy eyes. So you can see by just replacing the different mouths, you really get some some different expressions. And if you add the eyebrows, it just pushes it to that whole nother level of expression. So here he is with his eyebrows and you'll notice just by moving the eyebrows, you make a lot of different expressions. So 
So here I'm cutting out just a straight mouth, no lips, very simple. And you can even use the same mouth to smile or to make a frown. Now you have all these loose parts and pieces and it can be uh, a pain if they get lost and that you have to remake them. So what I recommend you do is be sure to have an envelope that you can keep the pieces inside. So that was our cute little alien. Let's take a look at how to make a human face. We're gonna start out with a nice oval shape for our face. And we're gonna build some ears, a nose, and I'm gonna go ahead and draw the closed eyes. Again, you can do that with cut paper if you'd like to have the face completely blank. I'm not going to give him a mouth though. I'm gonna create a closed mouth with the cut paper. So I have a little bit more control. On this face, I'm not gonna create as many eyes as I did for the alien. Instead, I'm gonna create more mouth shapes. Again, I'm thinking about how things join together and how I can animate them. So to do the hair, the hair is really defining of the character. What I like to do is just put the face on there and then put the hair up above the head quite a bit. This is gonna be a boy. I guess it could be a girl character too. It's kind of androgynous. And then I'm choosing lots of colors to fill in this hair. I really enjoy drawing hair, so I'm gonna, we're gonna, we're not gonna zip through this part too fast. <laughs> So I start out with the highlight color, in this case it's yellow. And this character is going to have kind of a gingery color hair. So I'm going to come back in and what I'm doing is I'm pressing down at the edge and then I lift my pencil up to give it kind of a, the look of hair strands as they lighten and go toward the highlight. And then I'm going to come back in with darker colors and start to fill in and really define where the deeper colors are, where the hair is kind of going behind itself. And then finishing it off with an even darker brown to really push those darker areas back behind. And it really gives some depth to the hair. And I want that hair to have a lot of personality too. That's what makes the character so fun. Now I'm noticing that his hair needs to go behind his ear. So I'm going to uh, trim this a little bit and then I decided to really make a, a cut in the hair so that it can actually go in front of the ear. Now we're ready to move on. The first mouth I'm going to make is an open mouth. And this could be used for an A sound or an E sound. And then we're going to add some eyes. And to get his eye shape just right, I created a couple of different eyes just to try them out. One is more cartoon and the other is a little bit more cat eye. And I ended up liking the, the one that's more cartoon shape and less cat's eye. But I created it too small, so Got to draw it again, make it a little bigger. Again, I'm putting the pupil up toward the top of the eyelid. 
so he doesn't have quite such a surprised look. But if you want to create an eye where he is surprised, then put the pupil right in the center of the iris. I also really enjoy drawing eyes and coloring eyes. I think it's pretty fun to make eyes. Using that deep indigo again. And then I'm gonna choose some colors of green and then some warm browns. Starting out with a yellow for the highlight. We're gonna try and really build some rich, deep color for these eyes. Even though he's a cartoon character, I'm gonna have his eyes be pretty realistic. Again, building those colors up slowly, darkening them in slowly, and then coming across with the brown to really accentuate the edges of the iris. And wherever the iris goes underneath the eyelid, I'm gonna create a little shadow underneath there so that it looks like the eye is kind of fading back. And then this kind of gold color just really warms it up, gives it a nice rich color. create a little bit of shadow on the eyeball itself. And there's our two eyes finished. And you can see just by turning them around and messing with them, I can change the expression. I don't even have any eyebrows or anything on here yet, but it's just the eyes and how they're placed on the face. So I did outline the top of the eye just to give it a little bit more definition I think that helps quite a bit. All right, let's jump into making another mouth. I'm gonna make a couple of marks here that show me how wide the mouth needs to be. And this is not an open mouth. This one's going to be a closed mouth. I'm gonna compare the two mouths and try and get the colors as similar as possible. I'm using three different hues here, kind of orange red, a nice peachy salmon color. And don't be afraid to flip things around, see how they look upside down. Sometimes it works. So I'll take a look at eyes open, eyes closed, mouth open, mouth closed. The eyebrows are something that really give you expression without having to do much of anything. If you just move the eyebrows, you're going to get quite a bit of expression. A look of surprise. A look of being angry or frustrated. Maybe a look of being worried by turning the eyebrows upside down. Kind of looks a little concerned right there. Now I've created several more mouths here because I want to be sure that we can lip sync and create some good sounds. So we have a A sound or an A sound and then an O or an A. Ah. This one's more of a A. Eh. There he looks like he's yelling. And this one could be an E. And then our closed mouth 
for mm, if you want to make M sounds. Our character is just about done. I'm going to create a couple more mouths and then we're going to use this character in Dragon Frame to do lip syncing. Well, that's the end of our first tutorial. We've made two really cute characters that we need to animate. So in our next tutorial, we're gonna take a look at Stop Motion Studio Pro. And we're going to try and take our alien character and really manipulate the eyebrows and the eyes and see if we can get some really cute expressions. And we're also gonna do a little bit of lip syncing. Let's move on to tutorial number two.